Welcome back to The Awaited, where we are talking about the extent of the knowledge of the Imam. May Allah hasten his reappearance. And uh, we were just talking about uh, the Imam, the extent of the unseen um, that he, he knows. And all Imams um, have emphasized that... Um, in fact, their definition of the unseen is that it is it is unseen and unknowable. Once it becomes knowable, even to the imam, it's no longer in the unseen. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals something to them of what's going to happen in the future, then they wouldn't define that as knowledge of the unseen anymore. It's, it's, it's it, it knowledge. is knowledge of the unseen. Right. It is something in the future, right? So something that has not happened yet. Yeah. However, they don't want people to call them that they have ilm al ghaib they don't want them to be known as ulama al ghaib mm. but they want that term to be exclusive to allah right. subhanahu wa ta'ala but they did not deny the fact that they do have the ilm al ghaib okay by the permission of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it is ilm al ghaib mm -hmm. and remember there is also ilm al ghaib within us we believe in jannah we haven't seen yeah. jannah yeah yeah we believe there's a day of judgment. We haven't seen the day of judgment. This is all in the future. Mm. And every Muslim has to believe in ma'ad, you know, in the resurrection. This is ilm al-ghayb. So this is, Allah told us this in yeah. the Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So similarly, the Imams, alayhim salam they also give some knowledge of the unseen. So it is ilm al-ghayb. It is some part of the knowledge of ilm al-ghayb. But it is, as they term it themselves, it is a knowledge given to us. Mm -hmm. Ilmun. Mm -hmm. You know, that was passed to us, like Amir Mumini says. And, and in the letter that I mentioned, uh, Imam al-Zaman, Farajahu sharif he wrote, and uh, it was given to Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Hilal al-Karkhi, where he said, Ya Muhammad ibn Ali, praised be Allah and glorified on how they describe him. We are not his partners in his knowledge, nor his power. No one knows the unseen but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he mentions in the book that only him knows the knowledge. He says, and I and all my forefathers from Adam alayhi salam and Nuh and Ibrahim and so on and so forth. And from the later ones like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and Ali wal Hassan and who and the other Imams before me. Until me, we are all the servants of Allah Azza wa Jal. We're the slaves of Allah. فَأَشْهِدُ اللَّهَ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ وَكَفَى بِهِ شَهِيدًا وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَلَهُ وَأَشْهِدُكَ وَأَشْهِدُ and, and, and I make all of everybody testify and witness that I am uh, not involving myself in those who claim that I know this with Allah or I'm a, a, a companion of Allah. And I, we don't know the knowledge of the ghayb or do we associate ourselves with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is no that's not what 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 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does aw yata'adda bina amma qad fassartahu laka wa bayyantahu fi sadri kitabi that you know what we don't have this knowledge in the unseen it is so so they want to make it clear that they are not ulama ul ghayb yeah. they want to, don't want to take that knowledge or you know, that that name but they don't deny the fact like imam al sadiq mentioned to ammar and earlier before the break that we don't have the ilm al-ghayb, but if we want to be aware of something, Allah will teach it to us. Yeah. So they have ilm al-ghayb, but they don't want it to be called as ulama mm -hmm. al-ghayb. Mm -hmm. And um, th there's also been a reference to Surah Taqweer 8124, of course, where it says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa huwa ala al-ghaybi bi He is not, he, so it, 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 he's not, um, I don't know if stingy is the right word, but he, he he's, he's generous with what he reveals of the unseen. Is that right? Like, you know, like I mentioned also in Surah Al-Jinn, that, you know, he knows the ghayb, but he can give it, he mm. has an exception to some rasul, to, to, the, to some messengers, that Allah gives them some ilm al-ghayb uh, and has that. So this is, there is basis for that in the Qur'an, for ilm al-ghayb. So there is nothing denying that in the Holy Qur'an. Mm -hmm. And we realize that the knowledge of the Imams, alayhim salam this knowledge, like I mentioned earlier, it is not limited to only the matters of religion, it is the matters of also other aspects, and it is required by the Imam to know this so that he can give the proper answer to the mu'mineen when they ask him. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why it is important for the Imam to know this knowledge, to have this knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, um, we're talking about other Imams, for example, Imam Ali, salam, Imam Baqir, because again, with regard to the Imams, they all had the same 
knowledge? Could it be said that because this knowledge was transmitted, mm -hmm. uh, again, people would come to them and say, how do you know this? And they would say, well, it was, it was, passed, it was passed on to me. You made a good point that they didn't go to Madrasa. Um, That's right. It's, you it's, know, in, in, a, in a previous episode, uh, we mentioned that none of our Imams, alayhi salam, ever went to a formal education unless it is from their father. Yeah. From the Ma'asum, or in the case of Amir al-Mu'mineen, it is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's it. Otherwise, they never went through any sort of education. They mm. could. And their education is not limited to only religious knowledge. It is broad. Yeah. We don't have any of the ulama in the school of thought. Any. And uh, even in Islam. Any alim who has such a broad width of knowledge. Even if you come to, for example, Imam Abu Hanifa, he had some knowledge of fiqh, mm. maybe some knowledge of usul, but when it came to chemistry, mathematics, no one says that he was a mathematician or a chemist. No. You know? So, so there is limitation. Imam al-Sadiq had the knowledge of chemistry. Imam Amir al had the knowledge of physics. You know, a man came to Imam al Amir al muminin and told him, Ya Amir al muminin I made an oath, you know, I, I made a vow, a vow, a nether, that if Allah fulfills my nether, I will weigh an elephant. Amir al salam told him, why do you make such vows that are difficult to accomplish? Yeah. You know, avoid this. But he said, no problem. He said, now Allah fulfilled my vow, I need to fulfill you know, my nether as well. He told him, let's go to a nearby river, and they brought a ship. Then they brought an elephant, and they put him on the ship. Then the ship sank. He said, mark it. So they marked. They got the elephant off, then the ship was raised. He said, now bring um, uh, scales. They had scales. And he said, he said, make bricks of wood. So they started making bricks of wood and putting them in the scale. They would weigh the brick and then put it into the right. ship. Weigh, 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 until the ship started sinking to the mark that the elephant had made. He said, now calculate the total sum of the bricks of wood and that will give you the weight of the elephants. SubhanAllah. Now, how did Imam Ali know this? <laughs> yeah. Now, he needed, he, he knew the laws of physics here. You know, he had to know some physics that was discovered way later, beyond his time. So, Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam, in order to answer this religious question, he needed to have this knowledge of chemistry, of physics, of this, other yeah. things. So, this is part of the knowledge of the Imam alayhi salam. The Imams have all this knowledge at their disposal. Okay, um, and and of course, again, uh, inshallah, you know, we, we will be thinking because if we're thinking about okay, what does the imam know? What doesn't the imam know? This does have a bearing on not only what we know of the imam himself, um, but also you know how what we what we understand about him, um, but also what we expect of him mm -hmm. uh, too. So because sometimes. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether it's possible to have expectations that are um, incorrect expectations of, of of the imam, for example. Whereas, because we know the imams always emphasise that that everything that they do, everything they know, is dependent upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yes. Um, we're also asked that when we when when we appeal to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala through the wasila of the Imam, yes. that we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and we say through the haq through the haq of the ah, of the Imam, ah, um, rather than uh, can can we ask the Imam directly if the Imam has has this kind of knowledge? Yes. I mean, this bears upon the fact as well that um, we know, for example, with Imam Zaman, uh, may Allah hasten his reappearance. We we will be writing arizas or mm -hmm. uh, we will be talking to him. Yes. We 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 expect him to know what's happening with us mm -hmm. uh, as well. Would it be would it be too much to is, is this too much to expect for him to kind of help us with our with our affairs mm -hmm. that he don't he knows what, all the details that are going on with us? Here, as long as we know that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I mentioned, for example, Allama al-Majlisi in yeah. Bihar al-Anwar, he says that our knowledge or our belief in the Imams alayhim is not that they have independent knowledge from Allah. No, yeah. it comes from Allah. Okay, so they're not equal to Allah, wal-ayyadu billah, no. They have everything that they have from Allah. Yeah. Now, as far as you saying that, you know, um, so, so th this is the expectation we should have. You know, mm. As long as we go to the Imam knowing and understanding that whatever power he has is from Allah, then we can go to the Imam directly. Yes. Right. Because Allah tells us in the Quran, and if when they 
commit uh, an oppression amongst themselves. They come to you, Ya Rasulullah. وَإِنَّهُمْ إِظَّلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ They come to you, Ya yeah. Rasulullah. Uh, and then uh, they ask Allah for forgiveness and the Prophet, the Messenger also does forgiveness for them. وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَاسْتَغْفَرُ اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُ اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِمًا They will find Allah all forgiving, all merciful. Here the thing is, the Prophet, why did Allah say they come to you, Ya Rasulullah? Yeah. Allah could have said, let them do istighfar and I forgive all yeah, their sins. Yeah. Okay. So Muslims agree on this. The problem some of the Muslims had, they say this was during the life of Rasulullah. Now yes. that he is dead, this doesn't apply. Yeah. And here is a discussion that I had once with one of those individuals. I said, who has got a higher status? A shaheed, the martyr, or Rasulullah? And he said that Rasulullah has a higher status than the martyr, of course. So Muslims agree that the Prophet has the maqam al-mahmood, yes. the highest rank yes. in Jannah. He is even higher than the shaheed. So if Allah says that the shaheed is alive, correct? Mm. In the Quran, that don't consider those who died in the path of Allah as dead, they're alive, but you don't feel. Yeah. Just because a person, I don't see him, I don't hear him, doesn't mean he doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, right now we don't see our viewers, you know, and, and, True. And, and, and right now yeah. through the, the television. Doesn't mean they don't exist. Yeah. You know, so uh, we don't hear them. Yeah. Doesn't mean they don't exist. Yeah. So, so similarly, the, the, they're alive. The definition of life, what is the definition of life? It means he can hear, he can see, he can feel, but we don't feel that, we don't see that. You know? So here, if, Rasul, if the martyr is alive, and if Rasulullah is of a higher rank than the martyr, using simple deduction logic that you can learn in first year logic, yeah. you know, in philosophy, yeah. the conclusion then, the Prophet, since he's a higher status than the Shaheed, and the Shaheed is alive, then the Prophet is obviously alive, you know? Yeah. So, and he didn't have an answer to this, you know? There was no answer to this from this individual. So, this is the thing, that we can go to the Imams, alayhim salam we can go to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, for tawassul, for shafa'a, for intercession, and there is nothing wrong with that. And uh, in addition to that, we can do that to our Imam alayhi salam, ajallallah mm. ta'ala farajah al-sharif. There is one comment I'd like to make, Sister Rebecca, and that is, we know that the Imam alayhi salam, as I mentioned in a previous episode, Allah says that, do whatever you do, Allah is going to see. قُلْ يَعْمَلُوا فَسَيَرَ اللَّهَ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ oh, yes. The Messenger and the believers. And, and we said that the believers are the Imam. So the Imam knows of everything we do. He knows that. And I said that our a'mal are given to him, presented to him, and he goes through it. So this is this is all part of um, of of uh, the way Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has actually created things and, and set things up. This is this yes. is part of Essentially. their state. Their status. Seek the means to him. Hmm. The means uh, one of the means of uh, Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. They're the means to Allah. So and the best means, and there, there. Let's 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 understand that the imams there really to guide us. Mm. That's what he wants to do. Imam, what is the definition or the difference between a prophet and an imam? You know, they say that you know some prophets are prophets and imam as well. Is that the imam not only gives you the direction, the imam will put you in his car and drive you to the place so you don't get lost. Yeah. You know, so the chances of getting lost with the imam is much less. Okay. Yes, so this is the thing that we have to understand about the Imam. For example, one day Abu Basir comes to the Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam and Imam al-Sadiq tells him, Ya Abu Basir, what did you do the other day in Kufa? Abu Basir gets shocked. He said, what did I do, Ya Ibn Rasulullah? He said, you had a woman as a student and then you started joking with her. And then Abu Basir said, I felt so embarrassed. I wish that, you know, the ground would just swallow me alive. And then Imam told me, don't do that again, Ya Abu Basir. Now, Imam was in, in Medina. Yeah. How did Imam know about what Abu Basir did in Kufa? But he was there, he knows this so that he can guide Abu Basir. And remember, Abu Basir was a mu'min, a faqih, a alim. So whomever turns to the Imams for guidance, Imams will take care of him and guide him. So thank you very much for an excellent discussion, Sheikh Osama, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Inshallah, we will see you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي 
كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين